Hi guys, today's lesson is 3.8 on mechanical energy. So here's the definition. Mechanical energy is the sum of all energies acting on a given system. So for example, a skydiver would have potential energy and kinetic energy at any time when they're falling. Remember from grade 10 that potential energy or gravitational potential is energy that you have from um, being high up. It's the potential to fall. And uh, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So anything that has a speed has kinetic energy. One thing to note here, energy is a scalar because it has no direction to it. And here we do have one formula that can be useful. Work is defined as the change in energy. So if we're talking about multiple energies in a system like kinetic and potential, then we can say the work is the change in kinetic plus the change in potential. So here's an example, a few different questions to answer. A uh, farmer is hauling feed and he lifts a nine kilogram bucket up five meters of rope. This takes a force of 150 newtons upwards. So have your formula sheet ready because there's multiple formulas we can use here. We're looking at what is the work that the farmer does on the feed. So work from our formula sheet is equal to force times distance. Sometimes we have force, sometimes we don't. If we don't have force, remember that force is equal to mass times acceleration, so maybe we can sub those in. We do have a force in this question, 150 newtons. And the farmer is lifting the feed up 5 meters. Okay, so we pop that in and we get 750 and remember, the units of work and energy are joules. I'll do part B down here. What is the change in potential energy of the feed? So change in, remember we can use the Greek letter delta to show change in potential energy. When we look at the change in something, it's just whatever the final amount is minus the initial. Okay, so like when we did change in velocity in our death equations, we would do Vf minus Vi. Same idea, change in potential energy is final potential minus initial. So what happens here is he's lifting this feed from the ground up five meters. So initially, if this feed has is on the ground, does it have any potential to fall to the ground? No. This is zero or zero joules. So keep in mind the formula for potential energy from grade 10 is MGH. So the reason why I decided that EPI was zero is because the height initially when the feed is on the ground is zero. So here I go, I'll sub into my mass nine kilograms, my acceleration due to gravity, and my height. And I can get the change in potential energy to be 441 joules. Now remember energy is a scalar, so the 9.81 that I'm using for acceleration due to gravity doesn't have to be negative because it's not telling us a direction for energy. Uh, last question, what's the change in kinetic? So a lot of times we kind of gravitate to doing it similar to part B where we would want to do um, final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. But remember that the formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So you need the mass, which we have, but you also need the speed, which we have no information about. So I find that the thing that I myself forget about all the time is the work formula. I gravitate towards that kinetic energy formula, but once you realize you don't have enough information for it, you want to go back to this work formula. So work is equal to 
any kinetic energy plus any potential energy. We're looking for change in kinetic. So I'm actually going to isolate that in the formula right now. Just doing a little bit of algebra here, moving the change in potential over. So I actually get this formula here. Change in kinetic energy is equal to the work minus the change in potential. We figured out the work in part A. We figured out the change in potential in part B. So those actually are the two numbers that we're going to use here. So I'm just going to take the 750 joules and minus the 441 from the previous questions. That's going to give me a change in kinetic energy of 309 joules. So we could even do more with this now that we have the kinetic energy and we know that the feed was sitting on the ground to start with. It didn't have an initial speed. We could figure out how fast the feed is going once the farmer lifts it five meters by subbing this into EK equals one half MV squared. So we can do even more calculations um, that are just review of grade 10. We're skipping this slide. I'm moving on to this one. So a 450 kilogram care package for soldiers is dropped from an airplane and reaches a velocity of 35 meters per second at 350 meters. What is the mechanical energy of the package? So mechanical energy, another word that you might see is total energy. So we have to decide what are all the different energies that this care package is going to have. Here's my very artistic plane. And here's my very artistic care package that's being dropped from the plane. At some point during that fall, this care package is going to have a height, which means it will have potential energy. And it's going to be going pretty fast, it's going to have some kind of speed, which implies that it's going to have a kinetic energy. So that means that if I want to find the mechanical energy, aka the total energy, I would just add up, do the sum of all the energies that are present. So the potential and the kinetic. Flashback to grade 10, what's the formula for potential? It's on your formula sheet. MGH, what's the formula for kinetic? 1 half MV squared. Sub in the numbers that you know now. So the mass is 450 kilograms. 9.81 meters per second squared for gravity on Earth. At 350 meters is what we're analyzing. Whoops, put my meters in there. One half, mass again, and velocity, they said 35 meters per second. And one thing that students sometimes forget is that it's just the velocity that's squared there, just the 35. So if you put this in your calculator exactly how you see it with all the brackets, you should be able to do this in one step and have it calculate properly. I highly recommend that all students pause the video right now and put this in your calculator. Make sure that you can get it. I'm getting a final answer here. We've got to go to scientific notation with the sig digs, but 1.8 times 10 to the 6 joules. So why is this idea important? Because the main idea that we study with energy is called the law of conservation of energy. In chemistry, we study the law of conservation of mass. Both are huge concepts in science. So we have to know that energy is something that cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes form. So when something is falling through the air, it might only have potential energy to start with. 
And all of that potential energy is then converted to kinetic energy as it falls. The kinetic energy doesn't just come out of nowhere. It has to have some kind of energy to start with that gets converted to kinetic energy. Now, an isolated system is a system where energy cannot leave or enter. So oftentimes in high school, we just ignore things like air resistance and friction. A lot of times if the numbers don't work out right, some of the energy has been, create, has been transformed to heat energy from friction or air resistance. And if we were able to measure that, which is more complicated than physics 20 allows us to study. If we added that energy on as well, we would still get the same amount of total energy. So energy is always in constant flux. It's always changing forms, but the total amount of energy that you have remains constant. This is the law of conservation of energy. This is something that absolutely is followed everywhere in the universe. If you have energy, it can't be created or destroyed. It only changes form. All of the energy in our solar system comes from one source, the sun. All right, roller coasters are a really good way for us to study the law of conservation of energy. So we've got to assume it's frictionless in physics 20 to make the math a little bit easier. But this roller coaster has a mass of 200 kilograms and it's traveling along the path that we see here. So part A says what's the potential energy right here. Part B, once the speed, which is from the kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. And part C wants us to find the speed at this smaller hill. So what we know is the roller coaster is starting at A. So it's starting from speed zero okay so it's stopped at the top of that hill so all it's going to have at a if there's no speed is potential energy so all we'll have to do is good old science 10 potential energy equals mgh we'll put in the mass of our roller coaster we'll put in g and we'll put in the 15.5 meters high that they're starting. Pop that in your calculator. And I get 3.04 times 10 to the 4 joules. Now, something to also note is that at part A, since there's no speed, the roller coaster is starting from a from rest, all the energy, so the total mechanical energy, is EP. That's only true at the top of the hill there because the roller coaster is at rest at the top. Anywhere else in this path, we've got a speed of the roller coaster. So we're going to have kinetic energy. So this number here is potential at the top of the first hill, but it's also the total energy that this roller coaster will have through the whole path that it takes. Now, let's use a little bit of logic for part B. We want to find the kinetic energy and the speed at the bottom of the dip. So I want you to ask yourself, is there any potential energy at part B? Part B looks like it goes right to the ground. So EP is going to be zero joules because there's no height. Okay, so in the formula for EP, if height is zero, then EP is zero. So actually, part B, the kinetic energy, is the total energy because that's the only energy it has at part B. So this is just, um, there's no math here. This is just logic, understanding that all of the energy the roller coaster had at the top has now been converted to kinetic energy because there's no longer potential. There's no height left. So this is just a matter of writing down the same number as the previous question. Now they've also asked us to solve for speed, which should be pretty easy now that we know EK. We also have a formula that we can sub for EK. We can put our mass in here. 
V is what we're looking for. So there's a couple simple algebra steps that you need to take. First of all, 1 half of 200 is 100. So divide both sides by 100. And then we're going to get, I'm just going to write ANS because you're going to have this long number sitting on your calculator right now. And then you're going to square root both sides to get the speed. When I did this, I got a speed of 17.4 meters per second. All right, part C says, what's the speed at the top of the second hill? So if we look at the picture at the top of the second hill, there's some height, which implies potential energy. The question's asking for the speed, so we know that the roller coaster is definitely going to have speed because that hill is smaller than the first hill. So we're going to have potential and kinetic energy making our mechanical energy. That's the first thing to write down. We have to say that mechanical energy is the sum of uh, potential and kinetic. Now, we have a lot of numbers that we can sub in. We've known from the beginning that mechanical energy is this number, the first thing that we calculated. We also know that EP, remember the formula is MGH, 1 half mv squared. So I can sub in my mass, my g, my height at the second hill is the 7.35 meters in the diagram. And I've got my 1 half times my mass times v squared. So initially subbing all the numbers in makes this look like quite a mess. But really, if you think about the algebra behind this, you've got some multiplication that needs to happen here. Okay, so do that multiplication, get a number. That number needs to be subtracted on both sides. Okay, that's the first step. All this stuff is going to move over to the other side. Then you're going to have a number over here that's approximately 15,990.3. I've got my 1 half times 200 again. We can do that in our head. Half of 200 is 100. And automatically this looks, once we minus that EP over, it looks a lot simpler in terms of algebra. We can divide by 100 and square root. So go ahead, take your time, show as many steps as you need to with that, but you should end up at 12.6 meters per second. It makes sense that the roller coaster, if they've gone up a slight hill there, it would be going slower than, if, than at the bottom of that first hill there, at the very bottom. So this number makes sense. We're going to skip this slide here and move on to this one. This is actually a question that we do in grade 10, but we're going to review it. It wants two different methods to find the speed of an object that's dropped from 12 meters. So the first method is actually unit one. We did this question already. We're dropping an object. VI is zero when you drop something. We're sending it a distance of 12 meters. We always have, when something's falling, acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to make the distance that it falls negative because it falls down. And I want to find final speed of the object. We had a formula in kinematics that looked something like this that has all of the 
parameters that we want to put in. We want final velocity, so we did a quick square root to get final velocity by itself. We can cross this one out because we said initially when something's dropped, it's not thrown, it's dropped. It has a speed of zero. So we can just put these two values in here, square root them, and get a final velocity. Hopefully this sounds very familiar to you since we've already done this. So once I put it in my calculator, I'd get a final velocity 15.3 meters per second. Let's talk about the second way that we can do the same question. The second way is with this law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy says that the total energy is the same all the way through the fall. Okay, so the mechanical energy at the top is equal to the mechanical energy at the bottom. At the top, when you're dropping this rock, what's the only kind of energy that the rock has? It's not moving, so it has no kinetic. It just has height. So the only energy, the total energy at the top, comes from potential. At the bottom, when it hits the ground, it no longer has a height. So it no longer is going to have potential. It's only going to have kinetic. Here's my formulas. What can you do when you have m on both sides of the equation like this? That's right, they cancel. We're looking for speed. So the first thing I'm going to do for algebra is divide by 1 half. Remember that dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing by 1 half is like multiplying by 2. And we've got this squared that needs to be taken care of now. So we're using this formula. Do you notice any similarities between this formula and the kinematics formula that we subbed into? We've got 2, g, and height. 2 times g times displacement, which was the same as height. So this ended up being the exact same formula. So you can sub in your values again. But we know these are going to be the exact same answer. So that's kind of nifty. We kind of gravitate towards the kinematics equations because it's the first thing we learned. But oftentimes, you can do it a little bit easier if you remember the law of conservation of energy. Pendulums are a great way to show the law of conservation of energy. Everybody's been on a pendulum before if you've been on a swing set. So what happens when you pull a pendulum back so in orange here, this is what we call the equilibrium position. If it was just sitting there, it would sit straight down like that. We've pulled the pendulum back and given it some height here. When you've got a height, remember you've got potential energy. Okay, it's got the potential to fall back to equilibrium. Now, we've pulled it back. It has no speed, so EK is 0, and EP is maxed out for this question. We could pull it back further, but for this question, we're pulling it back that far. Now, at the bottom in the equilibrium position, since this has a string holding it up, this is as far as it can fall. I don't care if this pendulum is you know, a thousand feet off the ground, that's as far as it can fall if we're assuming the, the string doesn't break. So at the bottom here, 
in relation to this pendulum system, the potential for it to fall any further is zero. Okay? That means that all of the energy has now been converted into kinetic at the bottom. So when you're on a swing set, you've been pulled back, you're going to be going the fastest at the very bottom. Okay, because you no longer have any potential energy. It's all been converted to kinetic. So what this question is asking us to find is the speed of the pendulum bob as it passes through the equilibrium position. So in order to do that, if we just went straight to this formula, because this has speed, we would need to know the mass, which we don't know here. We would need to know kinetic energy, which we also don't know right off the bat. So we can't just start with this formula. We have to start with the law of conservation of energy. We have to start with what we know. The EK that we're going to need is the same as the EP up here. So oftentimes we give you enough information to find one and you use it to find the other. So let's just write that out. The EK that we're looking for at the bottom of the pendulum is the same as the EP at the top. What is this from? Law of conservation of energy. Why is it important that I quote that? Because in Physics 30, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be explaining why this is happening. So you need to be able to explain that the law of conservation of energy is the reason why you've got EP at the top the same as EK at the bottom. So here we go. Let's put our formulas in. 1 half mv squared and mgh. There's a reason why this question didn't give you a mass because you don't need it. The mass on each side of the equation is going to cancel. We're looking for speed in this question, so I'm going to isolate my speed the same way that I did in the last example. If that jumping to that step was too much for you, just rewind the video a bit. I did this all the same algebra in the last step, divide by 1 half, and then square root to get v by itself. Now we should have enough information. We need to use the height of 0 0.25 meters. That's the height here that the pendulum bob was lifted, but it's not, you know, it's not this distance. It's not the height away from the top. It's the height that it would fall back down to equilibrium, okay? So just make sure you're picking the right height there. Pop that in your calculator and you should get 2.2 meters per second. We're skipping this last roller coaster example here. And that brings us just to the practice. So what I want you to do for COVID, we're going to omit number eight. We're also going to omit this reading. So you have questions six, seven, one, three, and four. You have five questions to do from the textbook. Remember, the textbook walks you through examples as well if you get stuck. And I'm always just an email away if you need any help.